What does it mean to have great faith? It means confronting adversity with the Word of God. It means declaring God's promises even when facing great obstacles. It means seeing the promises of God. Great faith is placing your entire confidence in what God has said. Let this be a year of great faith. It's an opportunity for me to share the Word of God specifically on the topic campus. So this time, we'll be talking about campus. Can you say the word campus? When I hear the word campus, I get excited. Why? Because it represents the students, the high school students, the college students in the campuses. Those people who are creative, who are full of energy and or who are innovative at the season of their lives. Not only, when you talk about campus, you don't only talk about the students. We get to talk also about our children. I'm a seven-year-old dad and I have two kids now. That's why when you talk about campus for me, it's very close because it talks about the people I value a lot. My kids, my future, my future leaders in my own home. Not only that, I don't only talk about students or even my kids, I talk about the next generation. Say next generation. We always believe as a ministry that the next generation is valuable for each one of us. That has been our desire. That has been our, our heart from the beginning. I get excited that because it's part of my job, I get excited because of the influence that they can have in every generation. That's what I'm excited about, reaching out the campuses today. Let me show you this picture. This picture is a picture of one of the victory groups I had in Victory Baguio before. Uh, I, was, I, I, I stayed in Baguio for 16 years. I worked there for 10 years. And these students were used to be part of my high school victory groups. One of them is a son of our senior pastor. Two of them are sons of businessmen and two of them are sons of a dean of a school. Every time I see this picture, I remember them 15 or 16 years ago. Why? Because these kids used to be my students when I was a kid's church teacher, when I was a freshman student in the university. I get reminded of the time when their parents would always pray for me, would always pursue me to disciple me and challenge me to be the best that God has called me to be. And every time I look at this, I also remember the time where God has entrusted me, them, their lives for them to be discipled and to be launched to do what God has called them to do. Three of them are now in college. Three of them are now about to pursue and about to witness their dream in their lives. When I see this, I see that the future is bright. Can you say the future is bright? These students will make an influence in every generation. These students will make an influence not only for the next generation, but also for my two children. I have two boys. If you would ask me, my home is the best place to be. My home is full of energy now. My kids are inquisitive. My kids are fun. It's the noisiest place. Okay, right now, because I have a seven-year-old and four-year-old kid, two boys. How many of you here are parents and you love your two boys? I love them. I love them so much. One time, I, my wife bought a shirt for, for our youngest, and on that shirt, the statement that was written was, never tired. Until today, it's still a reality. <laughs> That's why we always find time to exhaust them for us to have a rest and for them to have a rest also. Never tired voice. When we talk about the youth today, there are many ways on how people describe the youth. There are many ways on how they see them. They have different perceptions. And if you would look at them, most of them are part of the millennial group. They're part of the millennial group. That means they are either born as part of the Generation Y who were born in the mid-80s and the Generation Z who were born mid-90s. 
Okay, and they say that they, when you look at them, these are people, if you're going to look at the online articles and news, they will tell us what this generation look like. Okay, this generation, as they said, they said they are self-absorbed. They say they always think about themselves. To some, they call them the lazy generation. To some, they call them the lonely generation. To some, they call them the, the tired generation. Do you feel like that the young people experience those things today? Do you feel like that's the very description that people say about them today? Maybe yes, maybe no, but one thing we can be sure of is this, that the next generation is worth fighting for. The next generation is worth fighting for. As parents, your children are worth fighting for. As teachers in the university, the students you are teaching are worth fighting for because they have a good plan. They have a plan. God has a plan in their lives. Even if the technology is taking them over, even if they are challenged with a can-do attitude, whatever it takes, do whatever we want thing in their lives, we know for sure that God will take good, good, take good care of them. Our students, despite of them being creative, despite of them being innovative, despite of them being full of energy, they face a lot of challenges. Consider a person or a student going to school who's facing a lot of, a lot of peer pressures. He doesn't know where to run to. He doesn't know where he can get help from. Peer pressure. Some people struggle, some students struggle with their identity, they're struggling with their sins, and they don't know what kind of solution that they need for them to be set free and for them to be released from that chain. They're challenged to reconcile the expect, their expectation with reality. That's the very chance that they're facing now. They're bird, they have this burden of unmet expectations because they have so much expectations over their lives. Right now, they're having a hard time carrying and they're having a hard time breaking free from where they are. The demands of relationship from his school, from parents, that's causing them to be anxious and to be depressed. The challenge to strive to be better, to be faster, to be farther, to be further with those err in everything to do something for their lives and for their future. When they all face this, there is the result they get tired. Can you say they get tired? They get tired. Because they get tired, now they try to perform. They try to perform. They're tired to prove themselves. They're trying to, to find significance, meaning, and life to whatever, to wherever they can find it. Its effect, they lose the gift of youthfulness that's full of strength and passion. But one thing we can be sure of today we can redeem the future of our nation. We can make an impact to the youth of the nation. The reality that an enemy has come to steal, to kill, and destroy their dreams and their strengths, their plans, and their very lives. But Jesus came to save them. Jesus came to do something significant in their lives. How many of you, you have seen students getting tired every day? We see them get tired. But let me say this. When you see them tired, don't be surprised. Tell, tell to the person sitting next to you, don't be surprised. <laughs> don't be surprised. We all get tired. People get tired. Students get tired. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30, it says there, Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. When you talk about the youth, when this was written, when you talk about the youth, these are chosen, vigorous people. These are chosen, healthy, strong men. And yet the scripture describes they will get tired. Chosen, vigorous, yet they're tired. When you talk about the youth that time, it means a symbol of strength. That's why when you attend a youth service, it's full of strength. It's a full of energy because it's a symbol of strength. The youth before you talk about, when you talk about it, is a symbol of future. But the word says, they get tired also. The youth have limits. The youth have limits. They faint, they weary, 
they're exhausted, and they're tired. When you look at Isaiah, when this was written, the people of God were losing confidence. That's why in the, in the preceding verses, you can see there that they were whining, they were complaining, and they're asking God, Lord, where are you? We're crying to you. Can you hear us? Are you hearing us? Are you making something significant in our time today? They felt like they are limited with their lives. They don't find strength with their numbers. Because there was a lot of, they had a lot of enemies before that were trying to overwhelm them. They were trying to defeat them. And they're having a hard time finding an answer. Lord, where are you at this point? Where are you at this moment? Not only that they're overwhelmed day in and day out, they are tired and asking God, Lord, how long will this journey end? How long will this journey end? When are you showing up, God? I believe those questions are the same questions the students are facing today. Our youth have limits and they get tired. Our youth have limits and they get tired. What our youth need today is not another statement for us to force them to go to church. What our youth today is not another achievement for them to fulfill, for them to feel valued and loved and accepted. What our youth today is not another demand or pressure in life. What they need is a strength that comes from God. What they need is strength that will fulfill their dreams, a strength that will help them carry the burden of this world that will lift them up, lift them up from the burdens, burdens of this world. How many of you here are followers of Jesus? If you are a follower of Jesus, you know the secret of the strength. It's found in a relationship with Him. A great strength comes from a great faith. A great strength comes from a great faith and it is available for the next generation today. It continues in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Yet these youth are tired, but it says here, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Can you say the word wait? When you talk about the wait, it means to trust. It means to hope that no matter what is going on in your life, no matter how tired you are, no matter how weary you are, no matter how exhausted you are, you can look to God. You can run to God. You can wait on God. You can trust Him. You can hope in Him. Why? Because He is Lord of all lords. Because you can trust Him anytime. To wait on the Lord, to hope, and to trust in Him. Why do you think God can be trusted anyway? In Isaiah verses, chapter 40, verses 28 and 29, it says there, Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has, to him who has no might. He increases his strength. God can give you the strength. God can give the strength to the, the next generations who are tired today. That's why it points us to God. Every time we're tired, every time we feel nothing is happening in our lives, we turn to God, we look to God, we hope to God, we trust in God because we know that the God will do everything for us, for us to honor Him in that journey with Him. Amen? But they who wait... For the Lord shall renew their strength. It does not point us. The Bible doesn't point that we need to get strength from others or from us or from within us. It points us to God and to God alone. When the next generation gets started, remember the God of all generations gives power and strength. Students, if you are tired today, God can give you the power. Students, if you are tired today, God can give you the strength. Why? Because God is a God who is aware, who is able, and who is available 
for every generation and for the next generation. Let me just affirm and assure you today that we have a great God, that we have a good God in every season. We have a good God in every generation who will be there for us to help us, to those who hope in the Lord, shall renew their strength. When you talk about the renew, it means to exchange. It's a picture of taking off the old clothes so that you can take on the new one. That's what he says. And that's what we want to see. That's what we want to impart to the next generation. It's more of them to exchange their personal strength with God's strength. For them to exchange their own greed with God's strength, with God's power. Because it is only God who can give them fresh strength. And when we have the fresh strength, it says there, we can see that God will work things out on their behalf. They will mount, with, mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Can we, can we read that together? One, two, three, go. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. One thing I like about God is that God uses starred and broken people to minister to the starred and broken generation. Consider the life of David. If you look at the life of David, David battled deep despair. But because of his faith in God, because of his great faith in God, he came to get the strength for him to be sustained along the way. Remember the life of Elijah. Elijah was discouraged and afraid. Remember the life of Job. Job suffered great loss. Remember the life of Jeremiah. Jeremiah wrestled with loneliness. But because God is a great God, and he has great strength, and he wants to impart it to the next generation, to the students, he will be there for them. God can take good care of them. God was with, was with them in those midst. God was aware. God was able. God was available. God was, 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 was ahead of them during the time. And for sure, for each one of us today, we can be assured that even if the generation today that we are discipling, that we are mentoring, that we are coaching, that we're trying to reach out, when we point them to God, they can get fresh strength. That's true for all of us. I know all of us feel weak today because we haven't eaten any food for the past four days, right? But we'll be excited tomorrow because it's feasting time. You know what? One interesting thing about us denying ourselves and seeking God is that where we come to a point where we ask God, Lord, I need the full strength that I need so that I can fulfill your plan for my life. The strength is made available for all of us now as we follow Jesus, now as we have Jesus, we have those his strength today. Jesus can heal us. Jesus can restore us. Jesus can give us his strength. That's why when we look at the youth, we can say, we can redeem the strength and the future of the next generation. You have God. I have God. They can have God. They have God for their lives. The truth, we can never manufacture strength for them. They can never outsource strength from us. But there are two things that we can do for their lives. We can be aware of their situation. And second thing, we can be available for them. We can be aware by start listening with what they're going through, we can be available by being there for them, telling them, we still love you, no matter what. You're tired, you're weary, you're exhausted, but let me point you to God who can give you the strength, who can give you the future, who can come to you. The students today are innovative, they're full of energy, and they're creative. But apart from God, they will remain weak. But through God, they will be strong. Amen.
Let me read 1 John chapter 2, verses 13 to 14 as I end. It says here, And a second reminder, Dear children, you know the Father from personal experience. You veterans, you previous generation, you older generation, know the one who started it all. And you newcomers, next generation, younger generation, you have such vitality and strength. God's word is so steady in you. Your fellowship with God enables you to gain a victory over the evil one. That's our assurance today. That's our confidence today for the next generation. We don't need great things or big things, spectacular things for them to be changed. What they need is God Himself. They're already weak. They have limits in life. They have challenges to face. What they need is not another achievement. What they need is not another pressure. What they need is God Himself. Because when they have God, we can trust God that He will move in their lives. We can trust God that He will take good care of them. We can trust God that they will rise again, that God will redeem their future, that God will redeem their strength, and God will align them to the very path, to the very road, to the very destiny that God wants to bring them. As parents, that's our full assurance. Because they have the word of God, they have God, they can overcome the evil one. And we just provide a way for them to help them in this journey. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can we pray? Jesus, we come to you tonight knowing that you are a good God, knowing that you are the God who saves, and you are the God who gives us power in everything. Today, God, we remember the youth of this nation today, the next generation, the students, our children. Lord, many times we see them as students with full of energy, but deep inside they're struggling. Deep inside they're lonely. Deep inside they're exhausted. Deep inside they're facing the demands of this world and try to figure out things on their own. Today, as a church, as a family, would you come and touch them tonight? Would you come and reveal yourself that you are the right source, that you are the right strength in their lives? Thank you, Lord. If you're a student today, can you just lift up your hands? Let me say this. God has gifted you. You're full of energy, you're creative, you're innovative. But those things, don't allow those things to destroy you. Let the power of God empower you with those gifting to fulfill the call of God in your life. Be affirmed today that God has gone ahead of you. Let me declare, thank you, Lord, for the next generation that we have in this room. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Today we redeem the strength and the future of our next generation. Thank you, Lord. To some who have kids, to some who have children, would you come and show us and help us be aware and be available for them and impart the power of God that comes through the gospel, that comes through Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.